Dr. Santosh, thank you so much for coming on to the second edition of Ask Me Anything. Uh, thank you for hosting. Yeah, thank you. So the first question amongst the series of questions asked by prospective applicants for the UPSC exam is, uh, the first one is um, they are fearful of the competition. Many times people lose the race even before they get onto the track. Your advice for them, please. I think, you know, uh, if you can compare this to the stage fright uh, for people who try to get onto stage and start speaking and you yourself as a, are a public speaker, you know, the first time I ever went to stage, I mean, obviously we went to school, uh, uh, stages on school, etc. Uh, but that would be with a written kind of thing. So if you're going extempo, like I'm doing now, uh, and I remember, you know, there was this Rotary Club and a friend of mine thought a lot of me and invited me as a chief guest uh, to the program. And this was when I was a probationer in Coimbatore. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm pretty good at speaking back, uh, I mean, uh, responding, etc. But when I got on the stage, I got completely tongue twisted. There's nothing that was coming out. And, you know, people are looking at each other. And uh, it is the most embarrassing moment that I have ever had in my life. But then I decided uh, that, you know, if I have to be an IS officer, I better get on stage and speak with confidence. And so I started getting onto stages whenever possible. And so much so that today I'm a much uh, respected and uh, demand in demand public speaker. But at that point of time, at let's say 25 years of age, you know, uh, we all are given uh, the gift of the gab by God. But when it comes to stage, uh, it becomes like this. So. This is very much the same uh, when it comes to competition also. The uh, fear of competition, the fear of uh, whether I'm good, one, and fear of whether others are better than you. Uh, so I was asking a young boy, uh, how is he in class? He said, I'm second. So I asked him, why are you not first? He said, somebody is better than me. and <laughs> That guy is better than me. And he laughed it away. And I'm, the point is that uh, uh, in a society, in an organization, in a group, there are always people who are, you know, let's say your peers are getting prepared. So your competition should not be them. Your competition is uh, yourself. So what my advice would be, you should always think that <clears throat> there's one guy in the whole country who's going to get that first rank. And that first guy would be you. And if you are not sure that you'll be getting the first rank, you should be thinking that you're going to compete and get the second rank, right? Um, now, if you don't think like that, uh, then you have a problem. So I would always say, Dar ke aage jeet hai. You know, if you look at that uh, uh, advertisement for um, one of those soft drinks, uh, how true it is. If you get over fear, then there's nothing to worry. So, um, you know, starting off straight and preparing your day, uh, designing your day, uh, will make it easy for you to get over this fear. And, you know, everybody else is also thinking the same way. What about the competition, etc. So the competition is not with others. The competition is with you in trying to create a discipline within you. Because, you know, we all come through a process of schooling, uh, college, and, you know, doing a degree, etc. Where, uh, you know, apart from schooling, you know, this college days, etc., you will not have applied your discipline into this and this requires a lot of discipline so if you can bring the discipline you will get ahead of the competition anybody without a discipline and if he has ever gotten the IAS I'm sure he has done very badly in the service but if you have discipline during the preparation itself you can get over this fear just get it and so one of my you know when I was getting the stage to play the guitar one of my junior IAS officers he's accomplished I mean I call him the Rahman of the uh, IAS guitarist if ever there were one, uh, his name is, uh, he's from the Northeast. Amazing guitar, he can just play it. I mean, not only the guitar, he programs, he sings, he uh, does everything. So I said, see, I have this problem. I can speak, I can do anything, but when I get to the stage, I have the stage fright. What do I do? He says, think that, you know, everybody <laughs> in front, it's all cauliflower. And you start uh, doing it. That's the way he told me. So the point is, have a blinkered eye as far as this is concerned. Your objective is only the IAS. 
It's not anybody else who is standing in between or ahead of you, etc. Your preparation starts with you and ends with you. It doesn't matter who is ahead of you, who is behind you. It doesn't really matter. And it, it doesn't matter at all that others are encouraging you or discouraging you. Or, unless you bring up your self-confidence. And that can happen only through time management and designing your day. Sorry for a long answer. No, it's a brilliant, brilliant answer. In fact, this not only applies to um, uh, civil services exam or public speaking, it actually applies to almost every walk of our life. Um, so it's a, it's a valuable insight. You, um, you are a, a thorough disciplinarian. Um, so the question is, um, have you got this habit, um, you know, right from young days? Uh, for some people, it comes naturally. But there are many others who struggle with discipline, and it's a genuine issue. Um, how can people who are not natural with discipline develop discipline? See, I didn't, uh, frankly, to be frank, after I got in service, I really realized that time is so, so precious. So one started becoming extremely cognizant of it. But, you know, uh, one of the advantages of getting into an NCC, a National Cadet Corps, is apart from giving you um, that patriotic fervor and other, other, uh, other things, one of the best things about NCC is about discipline. So, you know, you go for these long camps, 10-day, uh, 15-day camps, and you're on your own. You have to wake up, you have to put the uh, dari in a particular fashion, you have to wind it up in a particular fashion, you have to keep the belt in a particular fashion. All is meticulous. So that's one of the things. If you ever, if you never get in an army, the next best thing that you can do is to get in the NCC. So those who had have had NCC or scouts as another activity in school, college, etc., that would have added the discipline. But you know, these days uh, parents are also extremely good at it. They will wake up for you, and you know, um, uh, they'll wake you up, etc. Uh, but as I keep saying, you can bring the horse to the water, but if the horse doesn't want the water; it will not do anything. So the uh, point is, if you have not been disciplined, uh, my suggestion is start this very moment. Um, that's the only way to begin it. And you will realize the big difference. I have realized it. Oh, my God. See, when people keep saying, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I never, ever use that word busy. I always had extra time for everybody, for everything. No holds bar. Anybody can walk into the room. Anybody can walk into the room. No, absolutely no question. Because, you know, uh, you lighten up the mood by being not busy and you become stressless by not being busy because you are always on you have see because suppose you keep the phone around four or five feet away you know you just stretch and get it that adds to a lot of stress you know everything speak and span around you and within you uh, will ensure that so not to worry if you're not disciplined that's okay uh, at least being cognizant of the fact that no, you're waking up at 8 a.m., 7 a.m., etc. But I need to uh, improve. In itself is a big victory. So I would, I would say start now, this very moment. Look around your room. Have you kept it neat? Have you kept it clean? Are the books uh, kept in one nice stack? Uh, is your pen kept properly? Is your, uh, you know, a table clean? Etc. Etc. These are small things. You know, one of the generals in America, what he said was, when he wake up. <clears throat> Lay your bed properly. It's the first thing that you do. And if you've seen that, uh, you'd have seen that at nauseam on Facebook uh, in full uniform, he says, this is the first thing. And so I was in America. My friend, I visited him in uh, um, Chicago. His name is Mariner Martin Pereira. So he told me, Santosh, the first thing that my mother taught me was to make my bed before I sleep and after I wake up. So these small things, if you have this mind for that, and I've seen you know, uh, people, you know, when they get an envelope from the postman, I mean, now you don't get envelopes anymore. Uh, they just tear it and the torn portion goes down. Have you noticed that? You've seen a number of films also, movies also you'll see that suddenly somebody gets in an IAS or job or something and they, it's coming and that you have to be cognizant of the fact that the paper is going down as litter and you are not supposed to litter, right? So being very conscious of these small, small things will make your day. And you will, you will, I keep saying in Tamil, you will be able to add time to your day. Kirba. Yeah, brilliant one guy. In fact, that, uh, that uh, analogy example you gave of uh, uh, make your bed is from uh, Admiral uh, William McRaven. 
whose oh. graduation talk uh, received over 10 million views That's and right. that in turn got uh, published as a book as a best selling new york times best selling book and that's oh, a, it. oh oh then i it's a great it. example you've taken uh, uh, dr santosh uh, the the bottom line is for anyone who's struggling with uh, with discipline start with the most simplest and the basicest like you said keep your pen close to you keep your book stuck it's such simple things right once you start taking care of the basics the important things kind of fall in place automatically that's Absolutely. a very good one um, Anumod, you have a very good question for Dr. Santosh. Uh, could I request you to unmute yourself and ask As the question? As a self-preparing candidate, how should we prepare an effective timetable which would include balanced weightage for all the subjects? Yeah. Anumod, thanks again for being on the show. Um, as I said, you know, um, uh, you know, getting that at 12 hours is, is very important. So, seven hours of sleep and um, five hours, you know, two hours will go in your physical exercises, yoga, etc. But 12 hours uh, is good enough. I don't think you should study more than 12 hours. There are people who are putting in 15 hours and that will burn out. Uh, so you should have time for, you know, uh, doing your uh, the things that you love. For example, if you're a, a musician singing or if you're a guitarist playing the guitar or if you're a painter, you know, this all will take the stress off you. So that five hours is basically two hours and plus food and everything put together. But this uh, 12 hours, I think you should equally uh, prepare. So if you're starting somewhere in June, let's say, uh, June to June, so that's 12 months, right? So somewhere around uh, June, um, uh, January, February, March, you should stop your main six uh, preparation. So January, uh, sorry, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, um, including June, if you have uh, nine months, then I think that uh, 12 hours should be equally divided between the prelims and the mains. Because, you know, the mains you can always pick up after you qualify for the prelims. So that March, April, May, June, that four months shall be exclusively prelims. So, so uh, timetable, which would include balanced weightage for all the subjects. Yeah. So let's assume that um, you have uh, out of 12 hours, uh, you have 10 hours for prelims and uh, prelims and mains. So then I would uh, seriously suggest that you uh, take four to five hours for uh, your optional uh, because, you know, that takes a lot of reading and four to five hours for your um, prelims. Uh, so that five hours, I don't think you should study more than one hour for any subject. So if you're studying geography, study it only for one hour. So you'll, you'll be able to cover five subjects and you will be able to relieve the monotony of uh, studying something continuously. Uh, the only problem is if you're very engrossed, you will not even know that you're crossing, which means you're you know, getting interested. So I don't think there, should, there is a watertight kind of arrangement. But at the same time, you know, you know that uh, these many pages in this particular textbook, I have to finish, right? So assuming that you read so many lines per a minute, you can calculate the average time taken to complete that. So that's one way of doing it. And then say, okay, I have nine months uh, to do this. How do I divide it? So that's the meticulousness that you have to bring into the preparation. So it has to be uh, a little boring in the sense that, you know, uh, you also need to divide the time available with the, uh, uh, with the text that has to be read. It's another thing that whether you will be able to understand it in the first reading. So you might have to do a second reading and a third reading. And one of my friends, uh, you know, he's an IS, IRS officer currently posted at um, Kori Kod. Uh, he's from Tamil Nadu and he was one of my uh, students, Subramaniam. Uh, he's an IR student. And he says he has this technique for fast reading. Um, so I don't know what it is, but uh, you know, we all want to read those lines and uh, also read in between the lines in a sense, right? To understand the nuances of that. Um, so there is a distance to be covered and there's only so much time available. So you need to uh, find out what will be the optimum uh, time per page, assuming that you know you don't have distractions, etc. You know so many pages, and then uh, look at what is time, what is the time available, and then read accordingly. So I would say that um, you should never spend more than one hour on any subject. It will get boring. Even that five hours for the optional, uh, my suggestion would be don't read continuously that five hours. Read five hours, uh, one hour of this, uh, then you know you try to get some. Uh, online questions, etc. about what you read. Is there something that I can additionally read on that subject? Is there some snippets 
uh, which will add value to my answer, etc. Um, so, the, if you have the luxury of those two hours, I think this is this would this is the way I would. Now, your system would be entirely different, uh, but I think you have to give equal weightage to your mains because you can't say that I will prepare for my optional after I qualify. That means that you're not confident enough. You have to take the stand right away that I'm going straight for the interview, which means what? You're giving equal importance to the prelims and the mains. And I, out of the 12 hours, I said two hours in which you have to spend at least four or five questions for CSAT. Every day, four or five questions CSAT. Don't do some 25 questions CSAT, you'll get burned out. Just four or five questions CSAT, one TED talk and one essay it will cover that two hours. So this is the way I would uh, seriously su uh, suggest you to cover the subjects. You can finish off anything in uh, exactly one year. Anamod, I hope uh, you know I've kind of answered your question. Yes, yes, sir. thank you. Yeah, Doctor Santosh, uh, here's another um, uh, frequent question that comes from uh, readers: that um, uh, is it is 2022 uh, too late if somebody wants to start? preparation now is it would it be realistic for them to aim for 2023 or is it still good enough to aim uh, to crack the UPSC exams for 2022 now if you're a sufficiently serious candidate I think 2022 should be good enough for you to start um, especially if you're done well in your plus two degree um, etc and you're reasonably confident that you can crack it uh, within the time available now if your confidence if you're not confident I would seriously say don't Let's uh, do 2023. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with starting off very fast, trying to catch up with the people who have started, let's say, two months back. It will last two months, let's assume. Um, and take a crack at the exam because, you know, uh, until you touch the water, how will you know whether it's hot or cold? Um, so, so you need to take a crack at the examination. And I know of uh, my friend who prepared after I started preparing, maybe three, four months later, and he still qualified the prelims. He went on to the mains, but of course, he didn't qualify the mains. The point is, uh, it it you have to balance it out with the uh, with your confidence level also, and with the amount of paper that you have to um, consume, uh, in a sense. So there's no hard and far. But if you if you are reaching somewhere around October, November, I would say don't, uh, because you need a year, almost a year, to prepare. But right now, I think you can still start preparing for 2022. Thank you for that, Dr. Santosh. Here's a question via Facebook from uh, Partha Sarathi. Um, he has his eyes set on uh, the UPSC exams. However, his family situation forces him to go join a job and start earning money. Uh, so he's now caught between should he quit the job and focus single-mindedly on this and face through financial troubles or... Um, or do the job, earn the money, and still somehow take uh, take the time out to prepare. Your advice. So, uh, finances are very important. But as like Anamod said, you know, if you are self-taught and um, you have the discipline, etc., I don't think you need to spend anything except you know you're sitting at home. But if the home is dependent on you to provide the bread, as it were, then you have to go out and study. There are many people. For example, there was a stopper. He was working in a Hong Kong bank. And he was 29, all of 29, when he attended the exam. He, he became India topper. Uh, obviously, he had lots of experience uh, working the brand, banks, private sector, etc. And to him, uh, working meticulously was practice, you know, it was a daily routine. Uh, so uh, he had extra five hours every day. That's how he spent, because, you know, the banking is a very demanding job and you're, it's basically number crunching, etc. that you do. Um, so if you listen to him, he would say that he spent just exactly five hours every day. And while traveling back in the tube and uh, while traveling out everywhere, while he's traveling, he's putting his earphone onto recorded, uh, you know, um, uh, recordings. And today you have apps, etc., which will read out subjects to you, like Audible, um, etc. Um, so this is a difficult choice because, you know, there are many people uh, who have to work perforce because, let's say, the father is unwell invalid mother is also working and they have extra you know other kids siblings etc and the family needs to run i think you need to take a chance if it's possible to stay at home without spending money on uh, tutorials etc but you have a good internet connection etc then that's good should be good enough but otherwise if need be you can work um but you need to 
you know, you're, you're, the competition is with somebody who is spending 12 hours. That's a difference I'm trying to tell you. Uh, so the climb is much more steeper. Uh, but here, there are, uh, the UPSC is replete with examples of such students. Um, there's one in Tamil Nadu, he used to work in a hotel making parotta and he still cleared the examination. So it's not a, um, um, while these anecdotal evidences, it may not apply across the board, uh, but somebody who is very determined, nothing can stop them. Got it, Nair. Thank you for that. Um, here's another question. Uh, and the question says that um, I have always thought that um, IAS is the is the job that people are fighting for when people write the civil services exam. But I lately realized it is not just IAS. So can you throw light on what are all the different gamut that civil services covers? Yeah. So um, the uh, there are the um, you know government of India all India services, which is IAS, IPS, and Forest Service. These are the three all India services. And even the foreign service comes in what is called Group A, and there are Group B services. So there are 20 plus uh, services, including Andaman and Nicobar civil service, Pondicherry civil service, et cetera, which are selected through this same examination. So out of the thousand odd people who get selected, there are many who qualify, but who will ultimately end up with Pondicherry civil service. Nothing wrong with it. You're still serving the people, right? Uh, it's a fact that somebody will get the top rank. It's a fact that somebody has to be at the bottom rank. There's no two ways about it. Um, the only way, uh, and if you are very uh, adamant that you should get in the service is to join that Pondicherry civil service, Andaman civil service. See, for example, I got into postal service first, Indian postal service. Um, and then I, uh, of course, I said that I will be joining next year, but do keep the seat warm for me in case I don't, clear, et cetera, I wrote to the uh, DOPT and then attempted. But I don't think you can do more than once. Uh, I'll have to look at the rules, uh, how many attempts you can make. Um, I know of a, I know of a, an IS officer, he's Kerala Kada from Tamil Nadu. His wife is also an uh, IS officer in Kerala. Both are from Madras Medical College. And um, she got into the IAS, okay. And they were not married. Uh, but he got into the Indian Foreign Service. So what he did was he quit. He did not join the Foreign Service. He rewrote the exam and got in the IAS. Because, you know, the problem with the IFS, IA, all these are, um, once you get into that, then you're always tempted to stay there. So you can uh, attempt all. He did not even take the choice. He did not say that I'm joining Foreign Service in case I don't qualify in the IAS again. I will uh, rejoin foreign service. He didn't do that. He just didn't do that. Look at his confidence. So there are people like that also who are preparing. But this civil service examination is all about grit. Anybody who qualifies um, is a gritty person. That's what I would say. So if you're, let's say, the 900th rank uh, in that, nothing to worry. He's still serving the nation. Um, so if you always think that the IAS is the only uh, service which is going to give satisfaction, I'm sorry. Any job which you love and do, and you think that you can do it for the country, uh, that's a job worth taking. So any service should matter to you. Of course, uh, everybody's trying to get at the cream of it, which is the IAS. So nothing wrong with that also. Thank you for that, Dr. Santosh. Uh, Anu, Anumod has a question about yeah, math. Could you answer that? Uh, the fear of mathematics, forget this. You don't, this is not mathematics. This is uh, basically common sense, but you need to practice, uh, Anumod. There are engineers who have failed in uh, the CSAT. It's only 33% you know that. So this should be a cakewalk for somebody like you. Uh, my advice would be keep doing at least five to 10 CSAT questions per day. Not that these same questions will come, but it will train your mind to think in a particular way. Because you know, you we all done the um, mathematics in school. That's all you need. It's basic common sense. 
I don't think even you should worry about mathematics. There's a lot of English which are being attempted. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I keep saying this, you know, uh, disaggregate the problem. Then it's uh, not an issue. That is, if you do uh, three or four questions, let's say even five, four questions, you're doing almost 1,000 questions in a year, which is more than enough. See, what many of the candidates are doing is, uh, last one month, they'll try to do some 100, 200 questions. That's not good enough. It's like your uh, 100 meters dash where you need to prepare for one year. Uh, so don't, that's why I keep saying do a little. So read an essay means when you read one essay per day for 15 minutes, you're doing 365 essays, which is massive. Where will you read 365 day essays in last 30 days? Impossible. There's demand on so many other subjects. That's why I'm saying disaggregate the problem. The IAS is a big thing, but you disagree it into two, three things, it becomes so easy. This is what I won't tell all aspirants. It's extremely easy, provided you uh, budget your time. And maths, don't worry, animal, it will you will clear it, but keep at it. Um, here's a question, I think, from one of your fans, Dr. Santosh. Um, how are you able to traverse different uh, avatars? Um, you have, they, he compares you with Kamala Hassan's Dasavadaram. Uh, you are a medical doctor, um, you are a musician, um, you are a civil servant, uh, you are a politician. So, so talk to us about uh, your ability to, to reinvent yourself. <laughs> Interesting question. Now, um, uh, it, it is there in my mind for a long time, you know, all this, uh, because I always felt that we, we, we have only one life, but we want to do this and that and that and this. Uh, it's not desire. It's, it, it's wanting to be more perfect as a human being, wanting to try to become as good as possible in what we are doing. So uh, I wanted to become an engineer. So I went to Trivandrum Engineering College for almost two months. Then I went to medicine. Then my, before marriage at 23, I told my wife um, that I will not be a doctor. And she was very shocked. So I asked her to come back and tell me what I'll be. So she went through around 20 different permutations and combinations and finally asked me whether you want to take IAS exam. I said, with this face, you will get IAS. She asked. I said, yes, yes, I will get. And then I gave her a second shock, which I said, I will not complete IAS also. I will get in out. I'll become a politician. And she, uh, you can imagine, you know, uh, at 23, uh, a young woman, how she will take all this. It was too shocking for her. Um, the point is, I think... Um, uh, from childhood onwards, my uh, especially after that NCC, and you know, my hair will go up when I hear the national anthem. More, all of us mostly. So it's about wanting to serve in you know, different capacities and doing the best for the country. So if you can think in that lines, all these are you know we can straddle uh, different vocations, different things, and trying to be world class at it. Uh, so these are the two things I would say: be extremely patriotic. Not jingoistic. Be patriotic. You love your nation means what? You will. Uh, I keep saying patriotism. The meaning of patriotism is to do as much as little hurt to the nation as possible. It's not as if you want to do many things. It's not. Don't hurt the nation. That means pay your taxes. Uh, don't do bad things to your people, your neighbors, your friends, your peers. Everybody is our. Each person is our blood. It's our brother and sister. Think of them like that. Don't hurt anybody by word, deed, thought, look, or action. And be as trustless as possible. Then you will have more time to do many things. So one is being patriotic. And um, secondly, is being wanting to become world class. So if you can do these things, straddling between any job becomes extremely easy. Beautiful. Um, uh, Dr. Santosh, uh, talk to us about, um, uh, you know, consistently I've known you for almost a decade and a half. Um, you've given uh, multiple TEDx talks, you've written articles, uh, even on your website, uh, the almost uh, 250 plus innovations that, uh, that you've done. So there is one thing that comes across um, on being world-class, but being world-class is more of a mindset. You know, it is not like a button where you just quickly turn on saying that from now onwards, I'm world-class. Uh, yeah. It is the process. It is a mentality. It is a mindset. So talk to us about how, um, not just for UPSC aspirants, but even for anyone watching this video in any walk of life, how can they aspire to be the best in their game? Uh, difficult to answer. 
uh, the point is, you know, to, these days uh, with the internet, with social media, you see much of what is happening across the world. And it's not as if they are also doing extremely well. You go to the US, you will find the best and the worst. There's extreme prosperity, there's extreme poverty. Uh, you go to Singapore, you'll find, you know, they are setting standards, Switzerland, you in, in name any of these countries. Um, um, there's a standard that is being set. So, um, so if you're patriotic, that's why I'm saying, oh my God, why can't my Chennai city look like Switzerland? Is what I think always. Um, so when, and, and the travel abroad have hardened that position me that it's purely the mind, you know, and the leadership which can do that. For example, Kriba, you, uh, I've seen from, as you say, one and a half decades, uh, from, from the first time I saw you in an unconference to now, you maintain a very high standard of integrity and performance. Uh, I don't know how it comes, uh, whether we can build it up. I think we can build it up. I was not like that earlier. Uh, but we can build it up. It's, it's a, as you said, it's a, it's not it's not it's not something that you can start today. Uh, it's by reading a lot, trying to understand, um, and thinking about what's called a potential. So we all have the potential. We are, as I keep saying, walking, talking molecules of potential. All we need to know is that the potential of a small child sitting in a kugramam inside Tamil Nadu is the same as the potential of a child sitting. Uh, in Philadelphia, one of the most urbane societies. The only difference is he has a circumstance, he doesn't have a circumstance. So I always that, said that, you know, uh, you see these boys and girls who are adopted and then they go to Sweden, the parents are Swedish, etc. They come back with an accent, and, you know, they're world class. So it only shows that he had the potential, but when he got the circumstance, he became world class. So, um, even a, even a person without circumstances can, for example, I'll give this example of Otto, Otto, uh, what is his name? Otto, Anand, Anadurai. Oh, yo, you should see his auto, auto rickshaw. It's a world-class place to be in, right? It's the cleanest auto. It has tax of newspaper. It has Wi-Fi. It has uh, um, you know, magazines of the day, you know, and that's an attitude. And why are other auto rickshaw drivers not doing it? It all beats me. At least when you see something like that, we can try. You know, you get in the auto. One, you have to suffer the smell of the auto. Second, this guy does not have a bath. He gets in the auto. I mean, the driver. So, um, you know, somewhere, uh, this, this is a behavioral change we need to bring in our country also, I feel. Um, you know, I was getting into this car in Madurai airport. I said, oh my God, I can't sit here. This guy got straight from bed and came and started driving the car. I said, this, you don't do this. I'm angry now. Hmm? Then I gave him a tuition on how, uh, what time you should wake up and what time you should have a bath and all those things. The point is, nobody in this country is telling all this. Nobody. It's all me and you and everybody is doing unto himself. That's all. So someday, uh, that's why I'm uh, so happy that the Prime Minister is at least talking about Swachh Bharat and all. Now, that's one aspect, but there are many aspects in your uh, 17 hours that you're waking up and even your sleeping hours, uh, you know, waking, uh, getting that, uh, as you said, uh, that admiral, about the, it's a small thing to do, but how many of us do it? You know, I go to a hostel when I was in Trivandrum Medical College. I used to go to a classmate. I'll go there and I almost, almost faint. Uh, it will be, you know, this trust will be hanged there. Then I will do everything to keep it clean and neat because I had to stay in the room, right? I'll go to another guy's uh, room. He was a physically handicapped. Uh, his name was Joe George or something. I forget his name. And you, it used to look like heaven. And it's the same size room. No difference. It used to look like heaven. Now, how do we build those attitudes? And that's where leadership comes. I believe that, you know, at levels of leadership, I think you need to you know, India at some point never thought they can be world class. If you remember, in my times at least I remember, we always used to say made in Japan, made in Japan, made in Japan, etc., made in America and the Gulf countries. But today, Indians have started thinking that they can think world class. They can win Olympic medals, right? It's all happening. So I think, um, I think this behavioral change will happen sooner than later. Um, uh, but for the preparation of this examination itself, uh, I think 
it's akin to managing your time and being stressless, etc. Uh, how do I answer? I mean, I've been rambling now. Uh, simply think that you are the best in the world. Kriba. Got it, Dr. Santosh. Uh, Anumod, you have a question. Please go ahead. How to evaluate myself, especially from the content context of essays? How to prepare essays for the best level of you? Uh, Anumod, the straight answer is um, read, read, and read as many essays as possible. Um, see, if you've seen our um, essay question papers, there'll be around, I think, 10 uh, optional options. Now, um, these options come from where? Again, question banks, which are available. So if you look at a, a book of around 300, 400 essays, 100% uh, chances are this one of these essays will be figured there in the question paper. So if you can read uh, all these 100 over a period of, let's say, 100 days, then you would have. But you also know that you know it has a word limit. It has to have an um, uh, initial thing and a conclusion, a body. So it's an argument that you're building up. So um, essays have to be cannot be extreme. Can't be, you have to be almost take a centrist uh, position. So let's assume. Uh, but in certain cases, you have to take an extreme position. For example, with the dowry system in India. Then you have to take a stand that, uh, you know, starting with Raja Ramon Roy and how it's currently continuing and still people are dying. Of course, we don't have the deaths of the women on the, uh, while being burned, etc. Uh, while the body is being burned, etc. But we are not moved much ahead in terms of um, and the, the aspirations of men uh, to, to, to ask for this dowry, etc., and how it can be or more. So there you take a, a huge stand. But wherever there's a political stand to be taken, I think you like to always explain this stand is like this, this stand is like on almost like, like a uh, center stand. Uh, but whatever it is, it has to be logically weaved together. And it will happen only through practice. Practice makes perfect, perfect. Practice makes it even more perfect. Uh, the problem I find with many of the candidates is that they think it's only an essay. But it's only an essay means what, about 275 or 250 marks. If you can top that through sheer practice, keep writing. You know, um, once in a week or once in two days, just think of a topic and start writing. Right. Now, this will happen only if you build up the vocabulary necessary for it. Right. And mostly these are from administration. So if you take Babad and all, it's, it becomes extremely easy to answer questions. Second, are social issues, mostly social issues. Third will be economy. I don't think beyond this science and uh, I don't think that will happen. So uh, the essay question paper is set in such a way that even a journalist paper who's done, let's say BSc Zoology also can write that answer. Um, so need not worry um, how to prepare essays from the level of UPSC service exam. Uh, what was the previous question? Ah, that's all. So, um, uh, as I, I, I also said that when you go to bed, take a uh, biography, uh, because you know the if the essay is embellished with quotations, it will add a lot of value, and that those quotations will, should naturally fit into your essay. And that will happen only when you are a, an avid reader. So, reading and essay writing are mutually. Uh, and uh, mutually uh, inclusive. So the more avid your reader, the better your essay is going to be because you're going to embellish your answers. So this is a long answer to your short question. Uh, no two ways about it. Keep reading. Every day one essay. Every week one test. Do it. Keep writing. Look at the time limit. Uh, just prepare for your, as if you are writing the essay question. Naturally it will fit. Um, here's a question from uh, Swati Deshmukh. She's saying, I am interested in uh, trying for IAS, but my parents are forcing me to pursue an IT career. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. Your advice, please. Yeah. So she has to decide first whether she's living for herself or for her, for her parents. I think... Uh, uh, we are all uh, educated enough to understand uh, 
um, that obviously you have to take your care of your parents, uh, but that's a different thing. What I need to become, uh, as I said, you know, uh, I'm the horse and I have to decide um, whether to drink the water. And of course, if I have a series of buckets of water kept, which water to drink should be my choice, isn't it? I, I don't think any young girl or a young man uh, should listen to that kind of advice. And, you know, without hurting your parents, you should never hurt them. You should sit with them over a cup of tea, you know, just relax, go out. And, you know, in so many words, without saying so many words, you should say this. Because, you know, if there is an element of confusion, don't take this examination. This is what I would say. Unless uh, you are 100%, 200% sure that this is the destination that you want to go. Because this is an effort that you see. There's a lot of sacrifice that you're going to do, right? Not only for um, yourself, but you know you might be not working and putting a strain on the finances of your parents. A lot of sacrifice. Lots of people have to sacrifice for you. Uh, so when you do that, uh, and if you take want to take an IT career, nothing wrong with an IT career. An IT career can give you equal, if not more, satisfaction. So important second thing for you to decide is what is going to give you satisfaction. Third thing is. You should never have a regret in life. Gosh, I could have done this. I could have done that. Never ever think. That's why, as you know, I, I can't say, you know, um, the politicians are like this, uh, but it's like that. So I said, no, let me take the plunge into politics. That's a decision, my decision. Uh, everybody was against it. My wife was against it. My son was against it. Everybody was against it. But then I know. But I, I, at the same time, I know that my family cannot be put into peril. We have, they have to be financially taken care of. And all those things. So it, all this um, uh, have to go hand in hand. And at some point, you have to convince your parents. And I would say, uh, if you're not convincing, then you don't get their blessings. Plus, you don't get their money also, the financial support also. So you need to convince your parents without hurting them. Tell them, you know, and give them 101 examples of uh, girls who have succeeded because they took a decision of their heart. Right? There are so many so many examples. You can see our uh, our Olympic stars, you know. Uh, you know, to look at a Mary Kong. You know, how many women take to boxing? Because she wanted to do it. And, you know, her parents, uh, maybe her parents were uh, not for it, but she would have, you know, sat with them and convinced them. So, so I think um, if her heart is in the civil service, go for it. If you're confused, don't take it. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Santosh. Um, what is a career progression for an IAS officer? And can Absolutely. you also can you also throw light on uh, the remuneration and the money aspect in terms of salaries? Yes, absolutely. Very, very good question. Um, so when I joined the organization, I thought I'll get a couple of lakhs or something, you know. And uh, I'm talking about 1995. All I got was 5,000 rupees, principally some of 5,000 rupees, which would go in, um, in the mess and um, some of the expenses associated with staying in Labasna, Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration. And then the, at the time, mobile phones were now, they say everybody will be in queue and then the, a lot of money will go in the calls now. But today things have changed a lot. I think probationers get something like 40, 50,000 rupees to start with. And they also get a vehicle. We never used to get a vehicle. Uh, when you, especially when you're on the field and uh, we were purposely on the, dependent on the BDOs and Tassildars and collectors for the vehicle, etc. But today you get a very decent car um, uh, and a driver. Um, so no limits, etc. Because you need to travel a lot. Um, so the career progression, um, uh, career progression is um, uh, you become um, after, so the, the first three months, let me start with that. First three months you are in what is called a foundation course with your uh, IPS, IAFS, Indian Forest Service, Indian Foreign Service, and if there's space, more space, these are, but during my time, these only these four services were there together in the foundation course. Uh, so in the three months, you also do what's called a, a village visit, which will be for around five, six days. You'll go to a different state. I went to Bihar, Garbani, it was a village name. Uh, you also go for what is called a trek. Uh, there's a soft trek, there's a medium trek, and there's a hard trek. It will change your entire perception of life itself. Um, then 
uh, it's three months is gone. You know, you know there's a lot of uh, studies that you do and you have to pass examinations prior about law, especially law, IPC, CRPC, and the Evidence Act. Then you do public administration. Then you do economics, etc. Then you also many of us. I, for example, I was an arts club secretary, so I had to organize lots of programs, musicals, and stuff like that. Uh, then you also had to do what's called the days, the South Day, West Day, East Day, North Day, etc. And you had to do the cooking. You had to feed the people in the mess. It's a beautiful experience, one of the most. Then you have to do sports, etc. So once you do this three months together, your heart is broken because everybody is moving out to their respective academies. And uh, we, uh, the IAs, go on to do what's called a Bharat session. It's 55 days. Um, different groups go in different directions. And there's a weighing for different uh, directions because then sometimes, you know, at that point of time, none of us had gone on a flight. So many of us want to go to an Andamans because Andamans, you can't go by the sea. Obviously, it takes a long time. Um, but I didn't go ultimately. Finally, we had to end up with uh, trains. Most of the travel was by train. But today, everybody's traveling by flight. I'm talking about 1995. Today is 2021. 26 years later. Yesterday, we completed 26 years. Um, once you do the Bharat, Bharat Darshan, you also have an army attachment in that one week. Uh, Navy attachment and Air Force attachment. One of the most beautiful experiences you can ever have uh, is the Army attachment and these three attachments. Then you have an attachment to the private sector. You have an attachment to the NGO. I was deep inside Anandapur in an Excel affected area. Um, so that will go in the Bharat Darshan. Then you come back, uh, come home, etc., and come back for phase one. Uh, you are in academy. Then you come back to the district for one year. Uh, you will be allotted a district. You are with the collector all the time traveling a lot. The one year you spent uh, in what is called the socio-economic study that you had to do about a village. It is a thick document that you had to come out with. That's an experience by itself. Um, and then um, come back to the academy for phase two. And that's, uh, for the, so after this 12 months, you become what is known as a sub-collector. The problem with the sub-collectorship is if you're not past your uh, local language, for example, I failed in Tamil. So while my batchmates passed, I was assistant collector still. Uh, from a, I, I was assistant collector training. That's officer training. And then when I completed the two years, I was known as assistant collector. Uh, assistant collector. Well, my batchmates are all uh, become sub collectors. So at that point of time, that is the most intra for thing for me. Somehow I passed my Tamil. So that is around one one and a half years of sub collectorship. You do basically law and order. One of the most beautiful postings is uh, sub collectorship, revenue, etc. But you can also establish yourself as a leader. When I was Chidambaram sub collector, I started something called a clean Chidambaram camp. One of the most fascinating work I would have done in my life. Fifteen days of breakfast, lunch, dinner on the road with my full team from Panchayat, uh, from the municipal chairman down up to the last person demolishing the entire Chidambaram. Now, that's an opportunity to test your innovator skills. So that's one and a half years. Then you become what is called an additional collector. Generally, you become an additional collector development. It's called a, a, a project officer, DRD. That gives you an idea of how uh, development works, roads, houses, all those are done, especially in the rural areas. Uh, this is basically only rural works. Uh, you also know how to handle crores of rupees from government of India, etc. And you also look at uh, the planning commission at that point of time. Now we don't. Um, so that's additional collectorship for one year. And then uh, you can, uh, you may go on to become a HOD uh, or you may be a municipal commissioner. Um, you go on to do different things. And after maybe seven to between seven and 10 years, you become a district collector. So if you're lucky enough, you may spend two, three years. Some people have spent five years, six years, etc. And um, after that, you can be in between all also you can be in secretary. They find you a little disturbing in terms of because you're extremely honest, etc. They may make your deputy secretary, uh, you know, deputy secretary of uh, municipal administration or deputy secretary uh panchayat, etc. But you know, there are, it all depends. You can't say which area you'll be going into. But the, if you're a topper, especially in Tamil Nadu, a topper among your batch, you are going to become what's called a DS budget. That's the you get a complete idea about financing because that's the heart of any organization and especially of the government. So that one topper will become a DS budget and DS finance, etc. Um, that's the early part. That's when you are almost finishing a subcollectorship. Then, um, then you can become an HOD. Uh, you can become an MDL court or director if he goes and there are a, a number of positions available. And when you reach a particular level, I don't know which year, you become a secretary. In fact, I was the youngest secretary in the history of Tamil Nadu. Uh, in 2011, when I became the IT secretary. Um, uh, then uh, in between, you can become a deputy secretary, additional uh, deputy secretary, uh, joint secretary, additional secretary. I was uh, I was joint secretary, I was never additional secretary. I was joint secretary, then I became a secretary. Um, so once you become a secretary, uh, the next level is additional uh, chief secretary, uh, sorry, principal secretary. 
uh, that's uh, if you ask me i'm not <laughs> it's never good at this uh, trying to calculate uh, when you get the increment and when you become this additional secretary joint secretary so you become principal secretary then you become a additional secretary and then you become a secretary a chief secretary in between uh, you can be empanel as a joint secretary in the government of india uh, and uh, uh, you can go to the government of india and uh, after five years you do what is called cooling off you come back to your cadre do three years and go back again and that's how you go on to become part of the um, uh, government of india so uh, this this these are the and there are n number of posts uh, that you can do you can be in secretariat or you can be in um, an hod's position these are the only two positions after the field so after the field postings you are an hod head of department or you are a, in the secretariat these are the different positions and if you are let's say 21 years of age you are writing you can fancy your chances of becoming what's called a cabinet secretary government of india or a foreign secretary etc so this i talked only about as the ias and ifs and police is an entirely different thing um so there is also a lot of career progression there also and uh, and uh, regarding the salaries um different scales you know now they don't call it scales anymore um but you know uh, i was at 25 years seniority uh, it is not bad uh, you get somewhere around uh, 3 3.5 lakhs uh, a month uh, but after taxes and all you may get around a couple of lakhs in hand and if you are lucky enough you have additional charge you get what is an additional charge allowance not for i was holding seven posts so if i had 40000 into seven i would have been a rich guy but i could take only one additional charge in tamil nadu especially uh, so so you can manage around 2 2.5 lakhs at the senior to 25 20 that's good enough and you know uh, even though it's not written down you still can have people at home uh, you can have a vehicle etc so there are many things which are not written down although i used to be extremely cognizant of it i would not use it for my personal purposes vehicles drivers etc on saturday sunday i would drive myself it's again very very personal thing uh, nobody stops you from using your own government's uh, system but you know the one of the things in public administration is to separate your personal from official so i used to do that very meticulously it's up to you again fantastic kudos to you for your uh, for your transparency and honesty these are especially money related matters are very difficult and fuzzy to hear so you really laid it out uh, very clear that's uh, it's fantastic uh, thank you for that and on a closing note for today's ama dr santosh you had a stellar career for the last 26 years um i know there are lots of high moments uh, moments that really bring you uh, lots of soul satisfaction so can you name one that immediately comes to your mind and we'll end this on a very positive yeah. i brought back 10000 out of school children you know dr kalam only spoke to me for one hour on it he, i took him through a software um uh, you know there are many there are I, as i said i have more than 300 400 innovations uh, but this was possibly the biggest because many of them went on to become doctors engineers i'm talking about very ordinary children and who dropped out of the, so that was a massive program and um, yeah, I, i got the best collector award for that bring back the newspapers report that they click uh, using the mouse click and drag the children back to school that's what indian express uh, or hindu wrote about that um and the point is you're making a difference to the lives of people and when i was in 2011 i was commissioner of horticulture this girl calls me said do you remember me sir i said who is this sir uh, you rescued me from a doctor's house at 1 am in the night i said yes sir i am completing my 10th i have got 380 marks and i had come out of the district in 2008 so this is 2011 i felt um, you know what can uh, anybody feel i mean that's amazing uh, feeling that you get that this child also had the maturity to remember uh, me and you know call me but you know i have made huge changes to the life of people the only thing i said was whatever it takes in when i am district collector not one child will be out of school and if need to be i'll beat you up i'll kick you i'll do everything but you shall be in school whatever you ask for under the sun i will give because the district collector in tamil nadu especially is two rungs below god anything everything is free in tamil nadu so what i did was even if they are not below poverty line because their names are not included i'll forcibly include them give land give them patta give them a house all that uh, generally goes to other people you know i would give them so i for me the child out of school 
I would treat that family as the child below poverty line, the family below. I will give everything to the family. And that was done using a software called backtoschool.in, not there anymore. B-A-C-K, two, two number, to school.in. Dr. Kalam um, called me over telephone. Uh, I was traveling from here to Kanchipuram. There was a minister's function. Urevar Peruvira, uh, that is a function I was going to Kanchipuram village. Four ministers were coming. I slept off around 14 calls from the CM's office and public department, etc. I called up. They said, Dr. Kalam wants to speak to you. He had obviously known me because he had come to my rural BPO. If you remember, I had established India's first rural BPO in Krishnagiri. Um, so he called me and said, you know, what is this back to school? So I said, do you have a computer? I have some, I have set an entire um, studio for you. So I took him, I gave him the passport, user ID, and he said, amazing, amazing. Then it stopped functioning. He said, what is this? It's not functioning. Sir, uh, uh, which, uh, which browser are you on? Uh, I'm on Explorer. No, sir, it doesn't work on Explorer. It works only on uh, Chrome. He got extremely valued with me. I said, what kind of officer are you? You can't uh, have a br um, neutral browser. You can't have a software which is browser neutral. I went on blasting me. But I took him through that 59th minute. Then my phone conked off because I was in a village and uh, there was no electricity in that room, in the classroom. And then my ministers had were already on the stage. Uh, but one week later, I got a mail from him. Sandoja, I'm going to speak about you at the National Civil Service Day. This is what I'm going to speak about you as committed leadership. And can you imagine this? I almost fainted reading it. And then I said, I have nothing to change here. Um, although there was only one mistake, dot com. I said, dot, you know, something. And uh, that was only. It. Then uh, I forgot about it completely. And on, on April 21st, uh, my batchmate, CG George, uh, not batchmate, a bit much younger IS officer, she calls me from Delhi and says, Sir, Dr. Kalam is speaking about you in front of the Prime Minister. I said, oh, fantastic. So that speech is there on my personal website. Uh, it's not so much about me as much as it is about leadership. I gave the leadership and brought the whole education department, whole uh, district administration to revolve around this particular thing that every child has to be in school. So when a Punjab person come, he'll come and say, sir, there are no dropouts in school. Then I'll go, just one click, I'll know these are the seven dropouts who are there. I'll ask them, yes, sir, he, this, he's going to school. He's, she's going to school. She's there, sir. And then only I will give any support to the uh, Punjab person. So yeah, I've done too many things uh, like this. But this time, sir, since you asked for one example, this is the best example I can give. Um, you now bringing life to people um, uh, and giving them as I said, no, they have the same potential as me, but they don't have the same circumstance as me. If I can give them a little better circumstance, they will flower and bloom. Brilliant, brilliant. That was that was amazing. It's a, it's almost a heart racing moment. Uh, I can only imagine what it have felt like for you. Thank you so much, Dr. Santosh, and for all the audience tuning in. Um, we will have this edited out and be available as YouTube Shorts and on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, do remember that Dr. Santosh Babu will be coming on uh, on this uh, AMA Ask Me Anything on a regular basis. So please do look forward to this. Thank you, Kripa. Thank you, Nisha. And most importantly, Anamud, uh, you had the patience to come back again. So it uh, tells a lot about your personality. I wish you the very best. I'm sure, you know, through this, uh, we can keep meeting. And I would like to mentor you if you're willing for it. Um, anytime you want to ask anything, I, I'll be at your disposal. Uh, because you seem to be on course. My best wishes. God bless. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Santosh. Thank you. Thank you.